the Lord. I was always under the impression that he busies himself spreading goodwill. In the late 1950s, the casting process for the TV series Rawhide brought together a talented group of actors who would become synonymous with the popular Western. The show's producers, Charles Marquis Warren and Andreboem, were determined to find the right mix of actors who could portray the rugged cowboys driving a herd of cattle from Texas to Missouri. For the lead role of rowdy trail boss Gil Favor, the producers chose Eric Fleming, an experienced stage and screen actor. Fleming's commanding presence and ability to convey both strength and vulnerability made him the ideal choice for the part. Clint Eastwood, then a relatively unknown actor, was cast as Rowdy Yates, a young, hot-headed cowboy. Eastwood had initially auditioned for a different role, but was asked to read for Yates instead. His natural charisma and talent for understated delivery caught the producer's attention, and he was offered the part. The rest of the cast was assembled through a series of auditions and chemistry tests. Sheb Woolley, a seasoned character actor, was cast as the Grizzle, one-eyed trail hand Pete Nolan. Paul Branger, known for his comedic timing, was chosen to play the cook, Wishbone. James Murdoch, a young actor with a background in theater, was cast as Mushy, a lovable, slow-witted wrangler. Murdoch's ability to bring depth and humanity to the character made him a fan favorite. The casting of Rawhide was a crucial factor in the show's success. Each actor brought their unique talents and strengths to the production, creating a dynamic and engaging ensemble. The chemistry between the cast members was palpable, and their performances resonated with audiences, making Rawhide a beloved classic in the world of television westerns. I'm sorry, Mr. Faber. We, we were just getting acquainted with your other guest. The directorial vision behind the 1959 TV series Rawhide was largely shaped by its director, Rudolf Maté. Maté was an experienced cinematographer before he became a director, which greatly influenced his visual style. He approached storytelling from a visual perspective, using the camera to capture the vast, rugged landscapes of the American West and the characters who inhabited it. Maté's creative influences included European Expressionism, which is evident in the dramatic lighting and camera angles used in Rawhide. He also drew inspiration from the classic westerns of John Ford and Howard Hawks. Maté's style was characterized by his ability to create tension and drama through visual means, rather than relying solely on dialogue. In bringing the story of Rawhide to life, Maté worked closely with the cast and crew. He collaborated with the show's writers to ensure that the scripts were visually compelling and that the characters were well-developed. Maté also worked closely with the show's cinematographer, Ralph Woolsey, to create the series' distinctive look. Maté's approach to directing was hands-on and collaborative. He encouraged input from the cast and crew, and he was known for his ability to create a positive and productive working environment. Maté's direction helped to establish the tone and visual style of Rawhide, which became one of the most popular and enduring westerns of the 1950s and 1960s. <laughs> Rawhide is a classic 1959 TV series that has stood the test of time. It follows the adventures of a group of cattle herders driving a herd of cattle from Texas to Kansas. The show's enduring qualities include its exciting storylines, relatable characters, and realistic portrayal of life in the Old West. Many fans have cherished memories associated with this show. Maybe it was the first time they stayed up past their bedtime to watch an episode, or the sense of camaraderie they felt with the characters. Whatever the reason, Rawhide has left a lasting impression on many viewers. Do you have a cherished memory associated with Rawhide? We would love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. Throughout the course of this video, we'll be sharing some funny, shocking, and sad facts about Rawhide that you might not know. Keep watching to learn more. Despite being over 60 years old, Rawhide remains a beloved symbol of the TV industry. Its timeless themes and relatable characters continue to captivate audiences today. Whether you're a longtime fan or a newcomer to the show, there's something in Rawhide for everyone. So sit back, relax, and join us as we explore the fascinating world of Rawhide. Who knows, you might just discover something new about this classic TV series. Things have been going real smooth up to now. Why ask for trouble? Ain't gonna be no trouble. 
The production of the 1959 TV series, Rawhide, took place primarily in the desert landscapes of California and Arizona. The set design was a significant aspect of the show's production, with the creation of a large cattle drive camp and a detailed cowboy town. The camp included a large number of tents, wagons, and other props to create an authentic atmosphere. The show's logistical challenges were numerous, given the outdoor filming locations. The production team had to ensure that they had enough water, food, and other supplies for the cast and crew. Additionally, they had to deal with extreme temperatures, dust storms, and other adverse weather conditions. To overcome these challenges, the production team employed several innovative techniques. They built a portable water tank that could be filled at nearby ranches, and they used air-conditioned trailers to provide relief from the heat. They also used large tents to protect the cast and crew from the sun and wind. One of the most innovative techniques employed during the production of Rawhide was the use of mobile production units. These units allowed the production team to film on location, rather than having to transport the cast and crew to a studio. This approach not only saved time and money, but also added to the show's authenticity. The locations used in Rawhide were carefully selected to provide a realistic backdrop for the show's cowboy adventures. The production team scouted locations in California and Arizona, looking for areas that had the right combination of rugged terrain, open skies, and natural beauty. They found many of these locations in the Mojave Desert and the Sonoran Desert. In addition to the logistical challenges and innovative techniques, Rawhide is also notable for its contributions to the Western genre. The show's depiction of life on the cattle drive helped to solidify the Western as a popular genre, and its themes of adventure, camaraderie, and survival continue to resonate with audiences today. A piggyback before I'd let him go for money like that. Fifteen heads more like. Rawhide is a renowned Western series that aired from 1959 to 1966, known for its gritty and plausible stories that focus on the lives of the characters and the adventures they encountered during cattle drives. The show stars Eric Fleming as Gil Favor, the trail boss, and Clint Eastwood as Rowdy Yates, a young drover. The series is not just about gunfights and shoot 'em up dramas, but it also explores sensitive and controversial subjects such as Native American rights, drug abuse, women's rights, racism, and injustice. The first three and a half seasons of Rawhide are the best, with great chemistry between the four main characters Favor, Yates, Wishbone, and Nolan. However, when Wooly left halfway through season four, the show lost more than just his character and the series became more plot-oriented and less character-based. The producers tried to replace Wooly with Charles H. Gray as Clay Forrester, but his character was generally irritating, and the chemistry between the four main characters was never recaptured. Towards the end of the series, the writers resorted to making some of the characters one-dimensional and recycling the same scene and dialogue, making the character side of the writing quite lazy. The plots also became formulaic and the nice little touches of season three were nowhere to be seen. Despite these shortcomings, Rawhide remained a decent viewing experience until the producers decided to get rid of Favor Fleming and make Yates the main character in season eight. The final few seasons of Rawhide were not as brilliant as the first four, and the show should have probably ended after about six seasons. However, the series left an indelible mark on Western television and remains a testament to the genre's ability to tell compelling and plausible stories about the lives of the characters and the world they inhabit. Overall, Rawhide is a must-watch for fans of Western television, and its enduring legacy continues to resonate with audiences today. Die real slow, huh? Like she left our friends, the kinfolk die. Well, you better be ready to go the same way then, dying real slow. The creation of a film score and soundtrack is a crucial aspect of storytelling as it enhances the narrative and emotional tone of the production. In the case of the 1959 TV series Rawhide, the music played a significant role in setting the mood for the Western genre and the show's themes. Composers Dmitry Tiomkin and Alex North were responsible for creating the music for Rawhide. Tiomkin, who composed the main theme, was an accomplished musician with a background in classical music. He was known for his ability to blend different styles and genres, creating a unique sound that complemented the visuals of the show. The main theme of Rawhide, composed by Chiamkin, is a memorable and iconic piece of music that captures the essence of the Western genre. 
The fast-paced melody and the use of instruments like the harmonica and the guitar create a sense of adventure and excitement. The theme song's lyrics also provide a glimpse into the show's narrative as they describe the life of a cattle drover. On the other hand, Alex North, who composed the background score, was also a renowned musician known for his innovative approach to film music. He often used unconventional instruments and techniques to create a unique sound that enhanced the emotional tone of the scenes. The background score of Rawhide complements the narrative by enhancing the emotional tone of each scene. For instance, during moments of tension, the music becomes more intense and suspenseful, keeping the audience on the edge of their seats. During moments of romance or nostalgia, the music becomes softer and more melodic, evoking a sense of warmth and sentimentality. The musicians involved in the creation of the Rawhide score and soundtrack brought their expertise and creativity to the table, resulting in a memorable and iconic piece of music that has stood the test of time. The music of Rawhide is a testament to the power of music and storytelling as it enhances the narrative and emotional tone of the show, making it a more captivating and enjoyable experience for the audience. All we want from you is to get your flock out of the way. We'd appreciate it if you'd take him up in the hills as soon as you can. Clint Eastwood gained fame through his roles in the movies, A Fistful of Dollars, For a Few Dollars More, and The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. Interestingly, a film called The Magnificent Stranger turned out to be two episodes of Rawhide edited together, leading Eastwood to sue. The series Rawhide is based on the historic cattle drives from Missouri to Texas in the 1700s and 1800s. In its eighth season, the main character of Gil Favor was removed, and Eastwood's character took over, resulting in a decline in ratings and the show's eventual cancellation. The reason behind this decision remains unclear, but it did not involve any million-dollar payouts to Favor's actor, Eric Fleming. There wasn't enough. Not from the trial. Not from the testimony I've heard. Nothing but a terrible... One of the most iconic scenes in the 1959 TV series Rawhide is the opening credits, where the camera pans across the sea of cattle, while the theme song plays in the background. The use of a wide shot gives the audience a sense of the vastness of the American West and the sheer number of cattle being driven. The haunting tune and the visuals set the tone for the entire series. Another memorable scene is in the episode Incident of the Widowmaker where Rowdy Yates, played by Clint Eastwood, has to break a wild horse. The scene is a study in tension and suspense as the audience is unsure if Yates will be able to tame the horse. Eastwood's performance is nuanced, showing both his character's determination and fear. The cinematography is also noteworthy, with close-ups of Eastwood's face and the horse's movements. In the episode The Search, the character Gil Favor, played by Eric Fleming, goes on a quest to find a missing child. The scene where Favor finally finds the child is heart-wrenching, with Favor's relief and joy palpable. Fleming's performance is subtle yet powerful, and the cinematography, with its use of close-ups and natural lighting, adds to the emotional impact of the scene. These iconic scenes have had a lasting impact on audiences, helping to establish Rawhide as a classic Western series. The show's depiction of the American West and its characters have become ingrained in popular culture, inspiring countless other Westerns and influencing how the genre is perceived. The show's themes of perseverance, camaraderie, and the struggle against nature continue to resonate with audiences today. Dance with the old man. Can't take another one. Sure. <laughs> sure. Clint Eastwood's career took an unexpected turn when he visited his wife's friend at a television studio and landed the role of Rowdy Yates in Rawhide. The show's theme song gained popularity and was even performed in the Blues Brothers. The character of the Mexican Wrangler, named Jesus, was actually named Jesus in the script, but the producers changed it to avoid controversy. In Spanish, Jesus is pronounced Jesus, which led to the character's unique name. The 1959 TV series Rawhide, starring Eric Fleming and Clint Eastwood, made a significant cultural and social impact. The show resonated with audiences due to its Western theme, adventurous plot, and exploration of camaraderie and loyalty among its characters. 
It was one of the first TV shows to bring the Western genre into people's homes weekly, creating a sense of familiarity with the lives and struggles of cowboys. Rawhide influenced pop culture by popularizing the image of the Old West and the cowboy lifestyle. It contributed to the growing trend of Western-themed entertainment, inspiring a myriad of similar shows, movies, and even music genres like country and Western. The show's iconic theme song, performed by Frankie Lane, became a massive hit and remains instantly recognizable today. Moreover, Rawhide tackled some relevant social and cultural themes. For instance, it showcased the racial and cultural diversity of the American West during the 1960s, featuring characters from Mexican, Native American, and African American backgrounds. This representation, although not without its shortcomings, was progressive for its time and contributed to discussions about equality and inclusivity. In essence, Rawhide captivated audiences with its thrilling tales of the Old West, leaving an indelible mark on pop culture and subtly initiating conversations about social diversity and inclusivity. The show's characters, stories, and theme song continue to be celebrated and remembered over half a century later. Join me? I thought maybe you might need some cheering up. Clint Eastwood's career in westerns began and ended with the same pair of boots. These boots, which he wore in the TV series Rawhide and the movie Unforgiven, are now a part of his private collection. In 1965, Raymond St. Jacques became the first black actor to regularly appear in a Western series, joining Rawhide as cattle drover Simon Blake. Interestingly, Eric Fleming, one of the show's stars, had his face reconstructed by plastic surgery after a 200-pound steel block fell on him while he was in the Navy. You heard Mr. Favor, get him started. Me. Rawhide, a 1959 TV series, received positive reviews from critics and audiences alike. The show's authentic portrayal of the American West, coupled with its compelling storylines and well-developed characters, contributed to its success. Critics praised the show's talented cast, including Eric Fleming and Clint Eastwood, for their strong performances. The New York Times described Fleming's portrayal of trail boss Gil Favor as solid and convincing while Eastwood's portrayal of Rowdy Yates was hailed as appealing and energetic. The show's writing and production values were also highly regarded. The New York Times noted that Rawhide scripts were smartly written and that the show's production values were high. The show's cinematography, in particular, was praised for its stunning depictions of the American West. Rawhide was nominated for several awards during its run, including four Primetime Emmy Awards. While it did not win any Emmys, the nominations themselves were a testament to the show's quality and popularity. The accolades that Rawhide received are significant for those involved in the show, as they recognize their hard work and dedication to creating a high-quality television program. The positive reception from critics and audiences alike would have been particularly gratifying, as it indicated that the show was resonating with viewers and leaving a lasting impact. Overall, Rawhide's critical reception and awards nominations are a reflection of the show's enduring popularity and influence. Its compelling storylines, well-developed characters, and stunning cinematography have made it a classic of the Western genre, and its legacy continues to be celebrated today. Clint Eastwood was only 28 years old when he began playing the character of Rowdy Yates, who was supposed to be 19 in the TV series Rawhide. Despite Eric Fleming being the show's star, recently released DVD packages highlight Eastwood due to his subsequent fame. Interestingly, Cheb Woolley, who played Scout Pete Nolan on the show, had a hash one hit on the Billboard charts with the novelty song The Flying Purple People Eater in the early summer of 1958. These facts offer a glimpse into the behind-the-scenes world of Rawhide and its cast members' accomplishments. During the filming of Rawhide, the intense heat on the desert sets was a constant challenge. Clint Eastwood, who played Rowdy Yates, was once surprised when a rattlesnake fell from a tree and landed on his shoulder. Luckily, he remained calm and shook it off without any harm. Eric Fleming, who starred as Gil Favor, was known for his generosity. He would often give his own coat to crew members who were cold during winter shoots. 
Fleming also had a pet bobcat on set, which he had rescued as a cub. Chev Woolley, who played Pete Nolan, composed and sang the famous Rawhide theme song. Interestingly, he wasn't the first choice for the role of Pete Nolan, but when the original actor was fired, Woolley stepped in. The show's creator, Charles Marquis Warren, insisted on authenticity. All saddles, guns, and other equipment were genuine, and real cattle drives were used for action scenes. This commitment to realism sometimes led to long, grueling days of filming under harsh conditions. Despite these challenges, the cast and crew formed a close-knit community. They would often gather around a campfire after long days of shooting, sharing stories, and strengthening their bonds. This camaraderie contributed to the show's authentic and engaging atmosphere. Billy won't wait. Well, you're in luck. I found one hand naked. That's a bad apple pie. Apple pie? In the 1960s, the producers of Rawhide saw an opportunity to capitalize on Clint Eastwood's growing fame in Europe. They edited two episodes, Incident of the Running Man and The Backshooter, adding some new footage to create a feature film called The Magnificent Stranger. The movie emphasized Eastwood's character and was released in Italy in 1966 and West Germany in 1967. However, Eastwood was not pleased with the outcome and contacted his lawyer, resulting in a cease and desist notice being served on the distributors. The film was pulled from release and has not been shown anywhere since 1967 or released on any home media. Apart from Rawhide, Eastwood and George Kennedy starred in Thunderbolt and Lightfoot and the Iger Sanction. The show also featured actors with memorable names such as Wishbone, whose full name is George Washington Wishbone, and Mushi, whose full name is Harkness Mushgrove Roman III. Try the jump wagon. All right. Rawhide, a 1959 TV series, holds a significant place in film history as one of the first major small screen westerns. It showcased the talents of a young Clint Eastwood, who would later become a legendary movie star. The series, with its gritty and realistic portrayal of the American West, set the stage for many future filmmakers to explore the western genre. Rawhide's influence can be seen in various films and TV shows that followed, such as the popular spaghetti westerns of the 1960s and 1970s, including Eastwood's own Dollars trilogy. Additionally, the series' episodic format and character-driven stories have become a staple in modern television, inspiring numerous contemporary dramas. The series also left its mark on popular culture with its iconic theme song and memorable characters. The show's exploration of themes like perseverance, loyalty, and the struggle for survival in the harsh frontier continue to resonate with audiences today. In essence, Rawhide played a crucial role in shaping the Western genre and the television industry as a whole, leaving a lasting legacy that continues to inspire filmmakers and entertain viewers. You join up with a herd on the good night loving trail. That'd be your outfit, Mr. Clint Eastwood's first wife had a close friendship with TV writer Sonia Chernus, which eventually led to Eastwood being cast in Rawhide. However, his casting wasn't solely due to this connection. While visiting a friend at the CBS lot, a studio executive noticed Eastwood because he looked like a cowboy, leading to his role in the series. The show's lead actor, Eric Fleming, had a tragic end. He drowned in Peru while filming a movie at the young age of 41. These instances demonstrate the unpredictable nature of the entertainment industry, where opportunities can arise from unexpected connections and circumstances, but where tragedy can also strike at any moment. That's target practice? <laughs> Not exactly. You see, we're teaching our friend up there. In the incident of the Death Dancer episode of Rawhide, which aired on December 5, 1963, actors Dick York and Barbara Eden played a grifter couple. Eden's performance of the Dance of the Opium Den in a distinctive outfit would later be reprised in the 1965 TV hit I Dream of Jeannie. Clint Eastwood, the show star, used the same gun and wore the same boots and rawhide as he did in his famous spaghetti westerns and the movie Unforgiven. His choice of footwear and firearm remained consistent throughout his roles in A Fistful of Dollars. For a few dollars more, the good, the bad, and the ugly and unforgiven. Eastwood had a long-term relationship with Roxanne Tunis, a regular extra and stunt woman on Rawhide from 1959. 
Their daughter, Kimber Eastwood, was born in 1964, leading Eastwood to request a divorce from his wife, Maggie Johnson. However, Johnson fell ill with hepatitis and was hospitalized, prompting a reconciliation between the couple. Eastwood and Tunis eventually met in 1972, and their relationship ended around the time Eastwood began seeing Sandra Locke in the mid-70s. Tunis later appeared in Every Which Way But Loose as an extra, but Eastwood didn't inform Locke about Kimber until 1983, causing tension between the couple. Listen, I saw you perched on top of that crazy looking wagon coming down the street that day. In the critically acclaimed TV series Rawhide, which aired from 1959 to 1966, a shocking event occurred behind the scenes. Actor Paul Breinger, who played the cook named Wishbone, lost his son in a tragic accident during the show's production. The young boy drowned in a swimming pool, causing Breinger to take a brief hiatus from the series to grieve with his family. The sad incident had a profound impact on the cast and crew, and it remains a heartbreaking moment in television history. Fight. If you have memories and experiences related to the 1959 TV series Rawhide, we'd love to hear from you. Share your stories about how this classic show impacted you personally or influenced your view of cinema. Likes, shares, and subscriptions are greatly appreciated as we delve into more cinematic explorations together. We're interested in knowing what made Rawhide special to you. Was it the thrilling adventures, the memorable characters, or the talented actors that left an impression? How did this series shape your perspective on Westerns or television as a whole? By engaging with us, you'll be joining a community of like-minded individuals who appreciate the art of storytelling and the impact it can have on our lives. Whether you're reminiscing about watching Rawhide as a child or reflecting on its influence as an adult, your insights are invaluable. Together, we can explore the rich history of this iconic series and the lasting legacy it has left on the world of cinema. We look forward to hearing from you and learning more about your personal connection to Rawhide. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe for more exciting content. That's good. Hey, uh, tell me something. Uh, what do you want with him? He's part of my plan.